Uh, I'll start recording up. Um, all right, who's eating some good food though? Uh, my my son <laughs> made me a PB and J sandwich, so you know I'm 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 set there. But does um, anyone have something? Some other questions? So this could be this is free time to ask. Yeah, whatever. here you you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna be right back and get something to drink and be right back. Well, Ben, you just have to tell me you want to meet yourself. That's what I was just saying is you just raise your hand and tell me and then I'll find you and unmute you. So Ben, there you go. Now you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, great. I was just going to answer your question about what I'm having for lunch. And we had a company picnic. <laughs> uh, a few days ago and they had way too much barbecue so we just sent everyone home with some brisket and chicken good stuff are you in the south no i'm in pittsburgh oh, okay so we're not known for our barbecue but it's it's great to have it awesome well thanks for chiming in guy did you let me let me find you guy i know it's a surprise you have a question i'm teasing you Guy is uh, often on our free Friday calls. Where, where aren't you? I know this is alphabetical. Are you, did, is your name something else there? Did he disappear? Why don't I see you in here? Uh, this list is all alphabetical. And for some reason, let me try to search. You're here. Okay. I don't see you in. Oh, there you are. All right. Whatever. Ask to unmute. I'm going to lower your hand too. Oh, because you raised your hand, it put you to the top of the list. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, where I am with my own um, stages, I'm just learning about object object oriented programming because I'm not a programmer and I'm fighting it quite exciting. Um, it, but it, it it is a transition. It is a transition. Um, it's like learning a new language. Um, I'm now um, using studio um to do my uh, dev work in um, yeah yep. um is there a guide to i want to use to i want to move to vs code is there a studio to vs uh to vs code kind of user guide or little something or other uh out there that um i can check out no. <laughs> okay. That's a straightforward answer. <laughs> I no. mean you send me you send me VS Code and GitHub, that that side of things. But um is there a okay, is there a VS Code tutorial that I could uh, that I might find useful? Well, I've told you there's there's the VS Code webinar we did, and then we did at least two others teaching. We 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 walked through it with Shin setting him up, um, who's Spanova. The, of Spanova channel. And then I forget who the other person was, but we recorded them and they're really good lessons on setting up VS Code and, and the power of the Git integration, which is awesome. Now you sent me a link to VS Code and Git. <clears throat> um, is it only one webinar or should I be looking at whole family of stuff? Is well, it, can you point me at the right direction for you? That's why I've sent, you know, I sent people to the VS Code on the Automator. Okay. On we have a lot of links to the webinar, to the different. Okay. I'll, okay. I, I need to go to the VS Code and Automator. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, um, I think I just freehand and typed that. I should have checked it, but it, um, yeah, we have uh, a lot of, you know, training stuff on it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very powerful. And, and by the way, Chad Wilson here is Maestria. He's the author of AHK Studio. Um, yes. And uh, he, he's on the call here too. But yeah, it's when you start working with the, the Git integration, that's where VS <laughs> really shines. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, 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 and that um, I've got uh, Studio throwing some curveballs at me, it comes up with errors sometimes. Um, that I don't understand, which is a studio thing, uh, not a my code thing. Um, but um, and I use it day in day out, and I never have an error. So that 
Yeah, I, I have an error specifically when I try to refresh the uh, boxes on the right, uh, which refresh the libraries. Well, and that's, uh, there's a problem in one of your libraries that has okay. an error. Well, I can't figure out which one it is. A refresh Actually, Project Explorer, and if I hit both, I get an error. An AJ Structures error. It'll tell you. Error. It'll so, tell you so, first of all, when you get a, 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 an error being thrown like that, um, it not only tells you which file is the one that has the issue, but also the line in the file that has the issue. So okay. if you it get says, a message box, if you get a message box, try to read the whole thing in there. I'm very okay. well, Can I show? Yeah, can I can, show it to you? I've got it on the screen. Well, what I was going to tell you was because a lot of people don't know this, and it's stupid. Any any message box with auto hotkey, you can highlight it and hit Control C, and it copies the content of that message box. Right? Like a lot of people don't realize that it's stupid, but it, it can come yeah, in. And not only not only is any message box, it doesn't it doesn't have to be an auto hotkey. Room, so I've just put way. it. I've just put it in the chat. That's uh -huh. there. I get. It says is it at line one. So the first line, and it has, and this is a, it looks like HTML or something like that. That is not our hockey code or a well known. It says continuation section too long. So what happens is you're trying to set up a variable that is very big into, well, with, with a continuation section. And our hockey has limits on that. What is ahk structures .ahk? Is that one of my libraries? Yeah, it looks like one of the libraries, ahk structures .ahk, seems to be that you're including that file, and that file has a very big um, studio. Okay, well, I'll go and look for that file and yeah. uh, deal with it. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Yes, um, that is something geek dude. You just said something I I I know, and it is something that makes a little bit difficult the the sharing of uh code because some programmers like to just be so efficient that they remove all meaning from variables and you have this very good code with variables named s k a i and somebody who might not know a lot about auto hotkey might find it daunting or complex or not even try to understand it yeah, brevity is true. Uh, Aaron, you are right. It's not the same. Um, but what I'm referring to in this case about efficiency is about efficiency of typing. So they're really fast at typing. Like they just go ahead and S and do this. That. And, and in the end, um, for other people, um, it is complex to share the code. It is complex to understand the code. It is complex to maintain it even. So then they have it in a way that um, it makes the growth of the community a little bit slower, but I understand why they do it. And I understand that they are, you know, quite... Now there are other styling choices that that's, it's just that. It's just styling how they put the code. Um, I have my own style. And um, for example, uh, there are some people who like the brackets in a specific location, some others don't. And, and there are decisions that are made. There are reasons why you do that. Um, and just as a quick example, like for example, um, let me just do this it's, real quick. Is AS, so I'm gonna make a confession here. Yeah. Uh, something I have, I've never told you is I'm one of those guys that that top curly brace should be on the line above, right? And <laughs> you always yeah. do the next one and I've never told you this, but I'm like, <laughs> That, that uh, annoys you, right? <laughs> well, happens. what I will say is uh -huh. after like a year of looking at it, now it doesn't bother me anymore. When it that, first that much. It, it happens to be the same. Now I'm like, whatever. And and I and, get... No, yeah, no. and because of working with you, I decided to do something. There's something. When I define a class, my class, I put the bracket right next to it or a function. So for example, my function... I put the thing in there. Same happens to the switch statement. I do it right next to it. Now, when I do an if statement, if true, 
I put the brackets below it. And there's a reason for that, that I do those kind of things. And it is because I want to be able, so, or false. So what I want to be able is to remove conditions at will without affecting the code. Because what happens is sometimes, let's say that you have the bracket right next to it, you can you cannot remove this if statement because the code is going to break. That's what happens. Or for example, if you remove this code, now this one is okay, but the bracket is, you, you are left without a bracket. So in all those things that I have conditioning, like for example, while true, I want to be able to remove condition, especially if I have multi-line conditions. I want to be able to remove conditions without affecting my brackets. That's the reason why I do it. Now in situations where I don't need that, like a function definition, like a function definition must always be there. I cannot just simply remove that function definition from there. Then I put the bracket right next to it because I understand the concept of kind of like compacting the code and stuff like that. But um, again, this is just styling choice. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference for some people. It, but but it annoys the hell out of the other person. That's for sure. <laughs> like it, it annoys the hell of some developers. But once um, you realize it's, it's much more of a preference than it is a right answer. Yeah, right? yeah, it is a preference. And I see it looks like Maestri, I don't see him right now, Chad. Um, he's I think he left, but he, he used to be one of those people that would write the most densely possible code you could have. And now that he's been programming, I think C sharp for a while. Mm -hmm. He actually told me he stopped doing that. He he actually breaks mm -hmm. it apart and keeps it separate and keeps it just much more, you know, intuitive to when you go to read it. Which I, I like I like the way you can have multi lines that if statement, you know, where you can have the conditions of different lines. Actually, um, yeah. That I mean, um, it makes it easy to read sometimes rather than having if you can like five conditions putting more than one line. Can you? Um, if you leave a space after the if a blank line it it breaks the if does it not sorry you've gone muted it doesn't break it it is something that you can do actually the 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 if statement can have spaces until the next thing and basically what you said let me go ahead and show real quick um an instance of that so i could uh, go ahead and open this thing and I have situations in which I have three different conditions. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And they're, they're all long conditions. They're not just, right, that's you know, the problem. If, so if true that, or false, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that's basically why I do that. And what, what I have right here is that um, you have uh, an if condition. If the first statement could not load the picture, and that picture is being loaded in a specific yeah. way, and I was able to read this particular key on the registry and yeah. the icon is good, then I go ahead and perform some action. So Correct. there's three things that are dependent on one another. They're very long. Having them in just one big, huge line is a mess. Yes. Especially, and notice that I grab this thing and put it in a variable. Yeah. Again, when I'm coding, I'm not coding for- Density. Um, it, no, well, like I'm not coding to make it easy, you know, like like very small code. I'm trying to make sure that whatever I coded is actually readable for me and easy to maintain Correct. six months from now. When I grab this code Absolutely. six months later, <laughs> I will understand exactly what is going on. Mm -hmm. And if I just don't want this condition, then I can just go ahead and comment that out. And my code is not going to it's not going to break. So there is That's the reason why I do it that way, even though it's it takes a lot of space. People don't like that, um, mm. you know. But what's a the penalty? There's no penalty for space, is there? Not when it's, when it's not. compiled. When it's yeah. compiled, it's the same thing. Um, when it's compiled, your 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 long variable names mm. don't matter. If exactly. it's just one letter or ten letters or fifty mm. letters, doesn't matter. It's going to be converted to ones and zeros, and it's going to be as fast. Yeah. It's just that people don't. Uh, uh, Feel is easier just to say S equals 10 and yeah. K equals 24 and then just go from there. But in the end, they're making a little bit of a disfavor to themselves and to other people because they, 
it's not going to be easy to understand six months from now. You know? You're right. That, yeah, un the unless it's the only know. loop, unless it's the only loop in for the program me, and it's a, in the five line program. For, uh, yeah. 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 For me, if even if it takes like 10 lines to explain something, if I can make it in a way that later on I know exactly what I'm doing and I can modify it easily, then I don't care. Uh, I know. Mm -hmm. Yes, that it is just going to be OK. And when I compile the program, the user is not going to know how I coded that, you know. Well, I think it's really important, though, we distinguish between style of how you write code and the actual code that you write, because yes. some code you write will be more efficient than other code. But yes. it's not how many lines you broke it across. It's the approach you took. Right. That is right. And sometimes, which which I know is Ace and I, most, for the most part, we're very independent of like, is this really going to be faster? You know, uh, as far as it executing, is it going to be faster? It doesn't freaking matter. It's how much time does it take us to write the code that really matters, right? And fix it, fix but it later there, when they say, when they say like, you know what, this doesn't work. Times, you know, when you're doing something a, a lot where efficiency does matter, right? And where you want to take more time optimizing your approach. So another question for you um, is, um, I've been working on an option of double clicking on an edit and it uh, formatting the text in a particular way, it recognizing if it's an email or a phone number or whatever. Um, and I'm thinking, rather than double clicking on it, can't I do it that it does it as it types? Now, um, is that possible? Because I've got a raft of code to recognize whether it's you know whether it's an email or uh, or, or or name or, or just long text or uh, or phone number um how can you do that on the fly as opposed to take you know the whole thing and i'm not really sure i follow that question actually. okay well you if you have would that pardon? Be can you show us an example or something? Okay, so you have um, a CRM and you're putting data into an edit. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it can recognize from the data whether it's a, um, a, a single word or whether it's a paragraph or whether it's a phone number or a zip code or a um, uh, um, whatever. And it formats it accordingly. OK, mm -hmm. now with capital letters or down letters or spaces for the zip code, because in the UK, the zip code is formatted in a particular way. Now, at the moment, I double click on an edit. It goes in, copies it, edit, recognizes what it is and formats it correctly and pastes it back in. Mm -hmm. But because I'm having ACC issues, I was wondering, is it possible to do it as I type so yes. I don't have to go back and recognize the edit? Yes, that is totally doable. You just have to assign a G label to the uh, edit control. So, but the the edit the problem I've got is the third pro the edit is in a third program. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, yeah, that, that's what third I was going to ask right now. So it's not something that you created. Oh no, yeah, no. So that is um, unless you're capturing the keyboard thing, yeah, yeah which is with the keyboard hook. Yeah, that's going to be really hard. I really not recommending you to do that that's going to be more complex than you think um, now, okay and somebody, i'm not talking about abbreviations i'm talking about uh you know it can be anything that anyone types you know yeah, into that CRM. You yeah in that case what i would do definitely is just create a hot uh, out of hotkey script that mm -hmm. takes care of checking what has been typed before sending it over to the next window so it is something is keyboard capturing before sending it yeah. Now, again, I'm telling you, I wouldn't recommend you that just because it is more complex than you think. And in, Correct. as I know your level, because we have been speaking and so on, yeah. I think it would be a very deep rabbit hole. How yeah. you're doing it with the double click mm -hmm. might be the better approach for now. Well, again, I stopped the double click. I now do a control click just because okay. a double click was interfering with right. um, it was other, the program, other, other, other functions on the program. And I'm telling you, just going with the keyword might be a little bit more tricky than you realize. So okay. at least just to tell you that. So uh, and that's ha having this conversation with you and getting your advice is is <laughs> uh, it stopped me going down that rabbit hole. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be more complex yeah. than you realize in that case. But yeah. I, I was actually kind of like interested in answering Ben Ben Serich. He was saying that whether AutoHotKey supports 
short circuiting of these statements? Yes, the answer is totally yes. Whenever you have ternary operators, and if you're using an if statement, it actually short circuits. And it's it, actually, Joe, we were just talking about that. I think uh, it was part of the live call, wasn't it? The, yeah. Can you define what you mean by short circuit? Yeah, it is a very good. <laughs> so, so here's the thing, and 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 I ran into it um, in the most funny. Th actually, running about this particular um, function, this function for those uh, I actually published it a few days ago, or actually yesterday. It gets the default icon for any extension. So you just say, for example, HK, and it gives you back the extension the 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 you the program that is associated with it and these three statements here again they were being short circuits in a way that i was not expecting and i got uh, uh random stuff that i was like what the heck now here's what i what i mean what i mean by that let me go ahead and make this v1 for everybody if let's go ahead and say this uh, i have if Variable, so let's go ahead and do this. If variable one, let's name it one, equals true. And we go step by step with it. If variable one is equals true, message box true. What do you think is going to happen here? When I when I run the code, what I would assume is that I would get um, this message box here. Very good. And also, I'm going to have that the variable is set to it, right? Good. Now, I'm gonna have an and statement. Now I have a, have a variable two here. What do you think is gonna happen here? We don't have variable two defined, so it'll be nothing. So it'll be- Well, I'm defining false. it. So I'm defining it right now. Okay. I'm defining it to be false. Okay. So if I do that, is variable two gonna contain something or not? Well, if you defined it as false, it's gonna be false in it. Okay. No, it will is... not because it short circuits after variable one equals true, it's done. It stops before it gets to variable two equals false. So it will be null or empty. Now, this is the answer that's-, that's I don't understand good. that. Uh -huh. So what happens is the if statement checks for one side, before checking the other one. Okay. Now, if these, and even though Maserith is going to the right answer, in this particular instance, it's not true, but yeah, it's the right answer. So what happens is this side is true. So the second side is going to be executed to check whether it's true or not. But there is something that happens there. This one was set to false and this whole statement is not true anymore. And for that reason, we're never going to get a variable. So right now, even though I run my code, I'm not going to get a variable. But let me check what happens if I go outside of the variable, message box, var2, and see what happens there. You see? Now let me, let me check if... Notice that even though the statement was not true, and as soon as I made it a string, it actually was true. But even though the statement was not true, I didn't get this message box, but the other one had some information in it. It was set. Now here's the tricky part. I'm gonna make this side to true, okay? So now both of them are true, okay? Now I'm gonna switch this one to false. And I have it false, but I'm gonna make a not statement here. So I'm gonna make this true. The false is gonna be stored here and then it's gonna be switched to true, so both statements are true, okay? Right now, this is what actually tricked me, for, for real, it just, because this statement, I just made it true by switching it, I have an AND statement, and this other statement is true, so I, I'm expecting it to have a value in it, but something happened in between the two, that variable two is made blank. And that was unexpected for me. And actually, I don't know if I'm the only one that found that unexpected. So there's a couple of questions <laughs> there. Um, I, now, if, are you defining a variable? Is it the same as 
some putting somewhere else vow to is true and uh-huh. then could you do without the colon is that the same yeah because... no, i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the answer first and then we're okay. gonna go ahead and so the answer to this is that as you're defining a variable right here this section that says false just you have to think about this whole thing here as one expression that evaluates to true or false right now what happens is that as the first part of the expression is false it short circuits there at never reach it never reaches the variable assignment which is what what the question was all about does version two does this short circuit because the and operand expects both parts of this the the expression to be true and if the first one is false then it says i don't even have to look for uh, further because the first part is false and i need them both to be true so it just short circuits right there and it, the second part never actually executes like an else so, if it'll never get to the else if, if nah, exactly if, or, yeah. if the first one so the, the the point here is that you have to enclose this in a parenthesis right so to evaluate make sure, each one at a time so that make sure that this section here is evaluated as one thing and then the second one is evaluated as a second separate thing so it was just a matter of parenthesis here that was going on and the short circuit is the one that was causing that because this and operand was short circuiting after the false that's what was going on that would explain a few issues i've had where joe said put everything in parenthesis and i thought why he didn't explain why he just said it's it's good practice it's good practice yeah this is where this is when the good practice comes into place and basically um not only that is because in our hot key version one as we were explaining things are not really expressions all the time so if you say message box so if if variable one equals my text this is actually not an expression and these quotation marks must exist in the variable for it to be true and that's weird that's simply just weird so what's the difference between putting the colon in there or not no because the colon is assignment it's not actually comparing two stuff it's actually assigning one value to another so this would grab this text and put it inside the variable one Yes, but without the column, you're comparing. Is the variable one the same as this string? But in version one, that is weird because now these quotation marks must be in the string. So you have to put parentheses about around it to force an expression, which means that now the quotation marks don't have a meaning. It's a mess. That's why. I I've been get, I've been getting I've been getting into this problem with the recent code. So uh-huh. I ended up having to use if in string to actually figure out what's going on yeah so in general yeah the other thing though is as i was gonna say because the original question and i ran i stepped out of the room talked about short sorting and what is that right mm-hmm. in the call we had i think it was on friday and talking about the if statement we were saying how if you use just multiple ifs in a row it will evaluate each one regardless of what happens to the one up above it right if you will use an else if it will mm-hmm. once it finds one, it short circuits and just jumps past, right? It doesn't exactly. continue on. Yes. What I didn't know was the one, and I don't know if you want to show it real quickly, was with the switch command. Yeah. It's even shorter than that because <laughs> you basically created an index off of each word, is what you were kind of kind implying. of. It's kind of. It's, it, I just alluded to that. So okay. basically, let's have a variable that has the number one, right? And then I will do a switch statement for variable. This is the reason why I don't care about variable length anymore because I have an auto assist that types the variables for me. <laughs> so if you don't have that, yeah, of course you want the shortest variable name, but that's okay. Now, here's the thing I have case one, case two. You have three minutes. Yep. Here we go. Message box. Um, true. Case two would be message box false. Now, here's the thing. Uh, This code, when I run it, if it is an else if statement, we'll do something different if I put a two in here. And we will see that in a second. So if uh, var equals one, and let's just duplicate the code. 
and else if var equals two. Let's duplicate that and we get false. So in this case, in both instances, if I have number one, as soon as the first information is correct, it does that. And this is the part where it says short circuits. It doesn't check for the next, next F else statement. Let's look at it. So let's run it. It stops here. It's going to check if it is true. If it is true, it's going to jump to message box true, which is what I wanted to do. And now it jumps. It doesn't take a look at, it doesn't make any checks anymore. The same is going to happen here. It is just going to jump to the case number one. It's going to show my message box true. Good, perfect. Now, if it is true, if it is a second, if it's the second option, this is where they differ. This is where they are act a little bit differently. So if it is two right here, the first check is performed, is not true, and then it checks the second one. Here we go. It checked the first one, it was not true, jumps to the second one, that's it. If it is a switch statement, it doesn't even check for number one. It doesn't even try it. It just simply jumps straight into two. You see that? So it doesn't even check the other cases. It goes straight to the case. It is using the value of that variable as if it was a an label index. or an index and it jumps mm. straight into it. Okay. So in some situations, and this is, I, I rather most of the time use a switch statement instead of this if else. The only situation when this will not work is if you're going to be performing different actions, like if, if in string, in string var test or else if regex match you know if you're using functions to determine the value yeah so to actually go ahead and work on the value and the function is going to return a specific value so the you're not looking at the value of the variable itself but rather using a function to go ahead and do that switch statements do not work for that because you cannot say if in string something like that you cannot do this in a, a switch statement that doesn't work but so no, it's just a value it's got to have a value so it has to have a specific value assigned to it you cannot compute the value so can assigned. you give um for instance if we're you... out of time here okay yeah uh, okay we will actually take a look at that later on but basically yeah. that okay. that was something that we were working on and that was a, an explanation as to well, I want to real two. quickly just add, so Dimitri made a joke about uh, we're saving 0. 0.0005 seconds, right? Um, however, if if the evaluations themselves had very complex things, right? You you know, the whole point about short circuiting, right, can, if each of these things, you know, matter, can really change, you know, and you should, should you know, for the else if you should put your most common one first. So the first check it does, that's the most likely one, right? It matters. On the switch statement, it's irrelevant. Right, like because exactly, and and no, and, and those zero point zero 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 five 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 zero zero seconds, it is that for that one thing. But right. imagine doing right. that millions right. of times, right. millions of times in a in a database or millions of queries to an API. Th then that number becomes one hour. <laughs> That's the problem with it. All right, so <laughs> let me stop the recording here, and we'll.